like that. He'd done some some uh, prophesying over Ahab and some of them and Jezebel, his wife, and said the dogs would lick her up. And guess what? The dogs did. And uh, so right after Joshua, I mean, Elisha's on the scene, here comes the prophet Micah. He's a man of God. And uh, we're going to look at it uh, tonight and see. We're going to talk about uh, Micah's true prophecy to Ahab. Did you know these uh, old kings and stuff, a lot of times, though, guess what? They didn't want to hear the true prophecy. They wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. Is that going on today in uh, in the White House? Yes, it is. They only want to hear what they want to hear and do what they want to do. They want to rule. They want to control. That's what's going on. We're going to look at Micah and... Uh, Look at some of the things that he did. i tell you one thing he did. He stood up for the Lord regardless of what the consequences are. Are you able and willing to do that? You as a Christian better make a, your mind up and make a decision. I'm going to follow Jesus because I'm going to tell you right now what's happening in Syria and places in the world could be happening here in America before you know it. It could happen. I'm telling you. And so it could be chaos in our streets out there. The, the grocery stores would be empty in three days. People be killing people trying to feed their children food. And famine and diseases, all those things start happening. But praise God, we got somebody to hold on to in his name, God Almighty. Amen. And you know, this book right here talks about him and tells, this is his holy word. This is his mind. Think about it. It's awesome, y'all. Get in it, read it, study it every day because it's still true today, current today. It has not uh, uh, went out of, it's still current and uh, future and past. All of it's right here. And he tells us as a child of God, he tells us what he's going to do, how he's going to do it. Amen? You just got to hold on. You got to endure to the end. I tell you right now, we're going. I'm going back in the uh, uh, two or 3,000 years here when no Micah was a prophet. He was a true prophet. And uh, Jehoshaphat, uh, he was the king of Judah. What it was, you got Israel. And Israel, Ahab was the king of Israel, but Israel was cut in half. You got part, northern part, and the lower part was called Judah, and the upper part was called Israel, okay? But at this time, Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah, and he was a a popular king, he was doing well, and guess what? He was a good king, the Bible says. There was only nine good kings during the kings, 33 bad kings. Think about it. And the bad kings reaped the rewards that they did over their kingmanship, you know? But you can read and study in God's Word and see it. Now, Judah, he made some mistakes, you know, he... He uh, hooked up with an ungodly man, which was evil, which is Ahab. Uh, Ahab wanted Jehoshaphat to hook up with him. And old Ahab, <coughs> he had this <coughs> thing against Syria. He done fought against Syria two or three times. This is going to be the third time he was going to fight against him, but he felt like he needed some help. And so he's going to get with Jehoshaphat, and he's going to ask Jehoshaphat, will he help him fight against Syria? Now, really, it's all the nation of Israel, but back then it was half of it was Judah and half of it was Israel. That's the way it was. And they were two kings and, and kingships there. And so they were the same people, and so Jehoshaphat said, hey, we are the same people, so we're going to fight with you. Did you know Jehoshaphat had over... A million one hundred sixty thousand army, not counting the people that he put in Jerusalem and around in those areas to guard the wall. By the way, they had a wall back then for protection, security. We need a wall in America, like our president's been trying to get. You go back and look in history, you'll see time and time again where uh, most of these uh, things had uh, cities and. Nations and stuff had walls. Babylon had some of the greatest walls you could ever rode chariots on top of them. I mean, it's a security thing. Nothing wrong with it. <clears throat> Makes
makes good sense. <clears throat> they put up a wall <clears throat> in uh, Ireland to fight, to stop the Protestants and the Catholics from killing each other. And it worked. It worked. They put up a wall in Israel to stop the Palestinians from coming over and killing innocent babies and people, and it, it worked. It, it cut down on a lot. So uh, America, you better get your wall down there. Mexico, get it up like uh, it needs to be done. So we're going to look uh, at some of the stuff here today. Ahab was a bad king. We see that in 1 Kings 16.30. And uh, uh, Jehoshaphat was a good king. We see that in 1 Kings 22.43. But if you got your Bible, you want to follow with me just a little bit uh, uh, tonight. Let's just look. Uh, I'll just kind of go through some of it. We won't get uh, uh, real deep into it. But uh, go to uh, 2 Chronicles 18, and we'll we'll look at some scriptures there. Jehoshaphat, in verse 1, he said it, it said it, that Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance, and he joined with Ahab, which is a bad thing. He joined up with an ungodly man. And I'm just going to give you a little, uh, as it's going on there, uh, now what happened when he joined with uh, Ahab, and Ahab told him, said, we're going to go against the Syrians, okay, and we're going to conquer them and do this. And you know what, uh, uh, Jehoshaphat, one of the things that he done that, uh, that was one of his ways that uh, helped him to prosper and everything, he said, I want to inquire of God, will we win this victory or not? I want a true prophet to tell me. So what happened is old Ahab brought his idol worshipers, 400 of them down there, and they got to uh, dancing around there and hollering and everything, and they told Ahab exactly what he wanted to hear. And what did he want to hear? You're going to be victorious. You're going to slay the Syrians. You're going to be victorious there. But it was a lie of the devil. And you can go back a little bit deeper in this verse 18 there. And uh, 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 Micah, when he prophesied, he said, he made the comment that I seen the Lord sitting in a meeting, in a table. Yeah, he seen him. And he said uh, they were discussing what's going on down here and said, uh, the Lord said, I need someone to go tell Ahab because Ahab was, was, had pride and he was evil and everything. I want somebody to deceive Ahab. So there were some demon angels at that meeting up there with God. We can see it in God's word right here. Verse 18, you can see it. Now let me tell you. And so one of the demon angels spoke up and told the Lord, said, Lord, I'll go and I'll be a lying demon and I'll convince those 400 Baal prophets to convince Ahab that he'll be victorious against the Syrians. God, and you know what God said? He gave that demon permission to go do it and he was a demon because a good angel ain't gonna lie okay so we know it was a but he got permission to go and that demon volunteered to go that's pretty heavy ain't it so other words there's some things going on there and the lord didn't like said so i'm gonna let a lying demon lie to him because he don't want to come to me he don't want to humble himself to me and cry out to me and ask me what's going to happen so i'm going to let a lying demon go down there and lie and deceive him and it's going to be his defeat because of it you see you know god's in control of everything <clears throat> and he can use demons too you know you know them demons that's cried out to Jesus when Jesus come up on and Jesus said, shut up. The demon said, are you come to torment us before the time? Them demons knew who he was. He was deity. He was the son of God. And they knew it. Who created the demons and the angels and, and Lucifer? and God did, didn't he? Did you know when he created and created them good, they chose to do evil. And, you know, I preached on it, I think it was, what, Sunday or something, or one night uh, about a third of them went, went to be with the devil, a third of them. That's okay, we got two-thirds. You can't count them. God made them. Amen. The Bible says we are the victorious. Hallelujah, praise God. Now, I'm going to jump over here. No, I ain't going to get there yet. Now, it says in verse eight, 18, 
kind of jumping on something. When old Jehoshaphat told Ahab, the king, said, listen, if you got a true prophet around here, I don't want to listen to these 400 Baal worshipers. He said, I want a true prophet. Is there not a man of God that's a true prophet that I can hear what God says? Now, Jehoshaphat had enough sense to say, hey, I want that. That's the way he worked. If he's going into battle or something, he was going to do that, okay? Uh, yeah, there you go, Nate. Uh, again, he said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting up on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left side. You see that? Uh, Micah seen the Lord there in that. Now, let's go a little bit further right here. Uh, I want to uh, uh, talk a little bit about it uh, uh, I'm, I'm telling you right here, and a, uh, Jehoshaphat said, listen, I want a true prophet. So you know what Ahab said? He said, well, I know where one's at. He's a true prophet of God, but he don't like me. Every time he comes and he prophesies to me, he tells me things I don't want to hear. Can you imagine that? Why? Because that king was an evil king, and the true prophet would come up and tell him what God said. And the true prophet the king would not listen to him, and he would throw him back in jail or something because of that. And he told Jehoshaphat, said, I don't like him. He don't like me. He always tells me bad stuff. No wonder he was evil. But uh, Jehoshaphat said, I want to hear from a true prophet. But let me tell you what to tell you. I'm just kind of getting the story coming along right here. Listen to this. So they said, go get him. So they went and got Micah, the prophet. And as they got Micah, Micah the prophet was coming, the, the head prophet of Baal and the 400, the evil one, went up there and told Micah as he was coming, this is what you do. You tell them, because we're telling you, we're dictating to you. You tell them kings that they're going to be victorious and everything's going to be okay. You better do it. They shotgunned him, okay? You see what I'm saying? Does that happen in our political arena today up here? Yes, it does. It's going on up there today. And people's got money, they buy into anything they think they can get anything they want, whatever. They're not against the law. The laws don't have no control over them because they think they got money. Just like that man that was uh, in that ring of the uh, sex trade. Now, they said he hung himself. I don't believe he hung himself. I believe he was killed because he knew too much. That's just a little shot there, you know. <laughs> anyway, let's go a little bit further right here. So, Micah come down there, and you know what he done? He humored those 400 prophets, and he told the king, said, yeah. said, what do you want? said, yeah, well, are we going to win? Uh, Jehoshaphat said, yeah, are we going to win this war uh, with the Syrians or what? And uh, oh, uh, Micah said, yeah, you're going to win it. But then that bad king had enough gumption to say, now you better tell us the truth. And so Micah said, okay, I'll tell you what God said. Let's read it. We'll read it here in just a minute. Uh, this is what he said. I think it was in 22, 14, I can't remember. Well, wait a minute, let me see. Uh, it, it, this is what he said. He said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. That's what the true man of God said. So when he said that, and he told him, said, you're not going to win. You're not going to be victorious. You're going to be killed, and you're going to be defeated. Israel is going to be defeated. That's what the Word of God says. You can see it in Second Chronicles 18 as we get into it, and also First Kings 22. We'll get into that in here in just a minute too. Oh yeah, the true prophecy is in First Kings 22:17. Uh, Nathan, can you bring that uh, First Kings 22:17 up, please, or Ronnie? in my Bible. I read it. I read it. First King. It won't let you? I, I got it. Wait a minute. I got it right here. First Kings twenty two seventeen. The Word of God says right here. Micah's true prophecy. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did not I tell you, tell you that they would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? You see that? But Micah seen the vision. Let's go a little bit further. I'm in 1 Kings right now, 22. 
I'm in the 22, and I'm going I'm, I'm to go to 23. This will, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to go to uh, 22. Wait a minute. That was 17 and 18. I'm going to 19 now. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord setting, now he's, uh, Michael seen it, the Lord setting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him and on his right hand and on his left hand. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up uh, and fall at Ramoth's uh, uh, one on this manner and another said on that manner? There came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Now, this spirit's an evil spirit, y'all. Look at here. That's in 21, 22. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. You see that right there? God said, God, and he said, he volunteered, and thou shalt persuade him and prevail also and go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Now, I'll tell you right now, the Lord did that, y'all. Since He didn't want to listen to him. He sent a lying spirit down there to lie to him, and it's going to cause him to be uh, uh, destroyed. And I'll tell you right now, we can jump on over here, and we can look uh, what happened. Uh, Ahab got struck with an arrow between his armor. And he hung in there about all day, and he died that afternoon. But anyway, uh, we see, uh, we see in uh, verse 37. So the king died, and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. And and uh, and one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked up licked up his blood, and they washed his armor according unto the word of the Lord which uh, he had spoke. You see what happened, Elijah told uh, Ahab and, and uh, Jezebel that the dogs was going to lick their blood up because they stole the vineyard and they was evil against that man and killed that man. And so Je Jezebel was killed and the dogs licked her up. And here Ahab, he died in that uh, army uh, battle with the Syrians and the dogs licked his blood up. But he didn't trust God. He was evil. Do you see that? And do you see what happened? Jehoshaphat was a man of God. He was he was good, but he made some mistakes here. He went with ungodly man. He was unequally yoked, wouldn't he? They done some wrong things there. But uh, out there in the battle, let me tell you what happened to Jehoshaphat. The, all the chariots of the Syrians was after him because he was dressed up like a king. He was in the chariot. And so they come after him. They wanted to kill him first. And all of a sudden, uh, Jehoshaphat cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, help me. And guess what? God helped him. Now, let me tell you another little, uh, little nugget here. Before this battle that we talk about in Syria where Ahab got killed, Jezebel and Ahab, uh, they, uh, Jezebel was so evil she would take uh, the seal of Ahab and write these evil letters and put that seal on it and send it out so she could get that vineyard of that innocent man and kill that honest man. This is going back before we get to uh, Jehoshaphat. And... Uh, so God seen all of that, and so he sent the prophet uh, Elisha the Tishbite, and he prophesied the dog's going, you're going to die, and the dog's going, so it, so that happened. But I want to tell you a little, a little one here. All of that happened, and Ahab, the Elisha come and told him he was going to die, and some of this stuff's going to happen, and guess what Ahab did at that time? He humbled himself before the Lord, ran his clothes off, cried out to the Lord, help me, and so the Lord told Elisha, said, tell him that uh, I'm not going to destroy him right now, but I'm going to do it on his sons and his house and his family while he's gone. Now look at that. I want you all to look at this one right here. Here's the sin of this man and what he done. But that sin and all of that stuff was passed on to his linkage of his family. You see that? It's in God's Word right here. You can go back in the Kings in chapter 17, I think it is, or chapter 21 and 20 and see what I'm telling you. I studied a lot of this to, to, to get some of this to come together here. Now, but that's another little thing. Think about it. Ahab done wrong. 
Ahab cried out to God, and God heard him. When, when you cry out to God and ask God for help, when you humble yourself down to the Lord, he'll hear that prayer. He'll heal you. He'll touch you. Amen? I'm telling you right now, but what happened to Ahab? He got his pride built back up again. He wanted to go take the Syrians over. He let the Baal people worship in all the groves and do all of that stuff. And that was against God. That was against God's commandments. That was his people, uh, God's Israeli children, turned against God once again. And so God said, okay, if that's the way you want it, that's the way we're going to do it. And so Ahab died on account of it. He didn't listen to God. And his household family, the way I read it and study it, was destroyed down the line because of that. What he done? He said he went and slept with his fathers. <clears throat> and uh, we see that. But Ahab, he wanted to uh, destroy uh, the, the uh, Syrians once again. But a true prophet, Micah, he, let me tell you what Micah done. After he prophesied what we're talking about right now, and he told Ahab that you're going to be destroyed, you're going to be killed, and this is going to happen and all of that. You know what Ahab done? He took the true prophet and he said, put him in jail and feed that man the bread of affliction. So in other words, put him in there and be mean to him, torture him, do all kind of things. And so Micah hit him again and said, that's okay. And, and, and Ahab said, when I come back from this victory, I'll let you out of jail. Micah said, you ain't coming back. That's about the way he put it, y'all. You ain't coming back. And that's what happened. He was struck, and he hung in there in the church during the day, but that evening he died from his wound. But Micah, he stood up for the Lord regardless of the consequences. You know, you and I, as children of God, remind, uh, remind us regardless of what the consequences are. If you're in business or whatever you're doing, you got to stand up for God. Just like that man, that's the way I feel about it, the man in the business that we talked about earlier tonight, uh, that was, that's was been established on a good business, a good uh, uh, ground and everything, you know. But he should have stood up for God. He should have stood his ground for God regardless. Just like Micah stood his ground, God said, tell him this. This is a true prophet. Micah said, I'm going to say what God says, not what man says, you know. So he did. And by doing that, what happened? He got thrown in jail. He got persecuted for it, didn't he? Big time. He got persecuted, but he stood his ground, didn't he? He did the work of the Lord. The purpose that God had put in that man to be a, 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 a true prophet of God, he stood and did what God told him to do, amen? And that's what we got to do as Christians, y'all. We've got to stand up for what's right. We've got to stand up for what's right regardless. We can't compromise and let these people say, oh, it's going to be okay. It ain't okay. If it goes against God's word, it's against us. It ain't what we say. It's what God says. If God says homosexuality is evil and sin, it's sin. It ain't what we say. It's what God says. Take it up with God. See how far you get. Amen. Praise God. So we got to stand. And as we see in God's word, people who did stand for God, they're victorious now. They got crowns. Amen. I'll tell you right now. But we see time and time again where Israel betrayed God, would not obey the commandments of God. And when they turned from God and they started this Baal worship and stuff again, they were thrown into captivity, slavery, or destroyed or killed. Bottom line. And if you want to find an example of that to, for the uh, homosexuals and all of that, God loves you so much, but he hates your sin. You read and study the Bible about Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what was going on there. And God would not tolerate it. And God destroyed it. He judged it and destroyed it. And he will judge and destroy it again, too. And if you think he did it for Sodom and Gomorrah, he'll do it again. Because his word says so. His word is truth. Praise God. And we see the examples here. We see it. Hallelujah. Micah was a true prophet. Praise God. Praise God. I tell you right now, it's awesome that a man stood up uh, to do that, you know. And uh, you take old Jehoshaphat. He asked to help God help him in the battle. And guess what? God showed up and helped him and saved him, actually. Actually saved him what happened. You know, a lion spirit come forth. Jehoshaphat was in 
the habit of inquiring of God before going into major undertakings like war. But not this time. He didn't do it the right way this time. Now, I want to tell you something. That's what our our president, our Congress, our senators, all that needs to be done. Every time we get in something major or something going on, they need to go to the Lord thy God and ask for help and from the pastors uh, of our great nation to pray about something and say, this is what God says the Lord. Amen. We need to pray that God will send us some true prophets that can get up there around the White House and tell a true prophecy of what's going on and stop some of the evils that's going on up there. We, pray, we need to pray in God's name that God's going to expose that unrighteousness and evil. The swamp needs to be drained. Amen. There's a bunch of people up there that need to be put in jail, not just fired from their job. They need to be put in jail. That's how evil it is. That's how evil it is. Wake up, America. Wake up, we the people. Praise God. Amen. Think about it. Praise God. Listen, I like old Micah. Anyway, in the battle, Ahab was killed. Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, he escaped. And I want you to listen to this. Oh, Jehoshaphat, it, I, ain't, I didn't see Ahab's army, but Jehoshaphat had 1,160,000. I'm telling you what, when them boys had a battle back then, can you imagine a battlefield with a million men on it, two million men? Talking about the blood up to the horses. You talking about slaughter? And them boys, uh, you know, you know. Now, did you know they're killing people with drones over there in Syria, and Turkey's coming in and all that. They bring in drones in. They got robots that goes around with machine guns and throws hand grenades. They sit there on a computer and tell it what to do. You could have drone attacks coming in. It's coming. It's coming. Drones. They're doing it now. They're sending out drones, and there's no, uh, a man don't have to drive, fly the airplane or do nothing like that. They just control it by computers and hit what they want to hit and destroy it. Can you imagine? Think about it. That's kind of, can you imagine fighting a war? A man sits here, does this drone stuff, and he kills 100,000 people? I mean, it's, it's what kind of world we live in. But I'm not worried about it because I know God's in control. Amen. We don't need to worry. He's in our heart. He's in. He knows what's going to happen to us and what's going on, and we're going to be with him for eternity. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I want to tell you tonight, praise God, for a man like Micah that gave the true prophecy. Amen. Praise God for a men that stand up for God. Y'all pray for our brothers that's generals out there like Franklin Graham and some of them pray for them that God will give them strength to go forth and uh, be recognized uh, uh, on the hill up there amen praise God we got some of this stuff going on today that just like in Micah's day we got people uh, worshiping other gods and doing things they ought not be doing they trying to take our freedom of speech away they trying to uh, do a lot of things to shut the Christian up uh, one of those, one of those Democrats, by the way, that's running to be wants to be a president. The first thing he wants to do is stop all Christians that are against same-sex marriages. He wants to take the tax exempt away from churches that do not agree with same-sex marriage. But I'm here to tell you tonight. Our Bible says that's sin, and we're going to stand on it regardless. So we pray in God to take that man out of there, and God can do it. Just like he took Ahab out, he can take them out. Everybody bow your head. Anybody get anything out of this message? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you touch my brothers and sisters in here tonight, God. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Be with the folks on the Internet, God. We're going to obey you regardless. We're going to stand with your word and what you said in the holy name of Jesus. Sin is sin. It don't change. If your word says it's sin, we're going to stand on it, God. We're going to stand what your word says. And you're gonna, you've already defeated the unrighteous when your son Jesus died on the cross. 
and he was buried and rose on that third day. And anybody watching us on the camera tonight, you can be saved if you'll just ask him in your heart because he loves you. He loves you. I pray, God, you bless each and every one that's here tonight in a special way. Go with us tonight, God, and be with us Sunday. Have your win here Sunday, God, in the name of Jesus. We look for an angel to tear down strongholds to prepare the way for that service Sunday morning. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. Go home, hit the refrigerator. <laughs>